please be seated. Can anything good come out of Swartkill, New York? You ever heard of it before? Not me. Well, that was the birthplace of Isabella Bomfrey, who became known as Sojourner Truth. Maybe you've heard of her. She was sold into slavery at the age of nine. Later, she escaped with her infant daughter and went on to become a prominent abolitionist and an advocate for women's rights. Can anything good come out of Hodgenville, Kentucky? You ever heard of that place? Oh, you have. Oh, a couple folks have, okay. Well, then you know that Abraham Lincoln was born there, right? The family eventually moved uh, up into Illinois, but of course you know about President Lincoln and the Emancipation Proclamation which freed the slaves and his Gettysburg Address where he, create, where he uh, dedicated to the proposition that all people are created equal. And can anything good come out of Tuskegee, Alabama? Anybody know about that? Tuskegee, Alabama is from where Rosa Parks was from. And you know that story about one day weary from work, she refused to give up her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus, and she was arrested. Participating in that boycott was an eloquent preacher, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who became a prophet of justice among the races and nations, winning the Nobel Peace Prize. We will remember him in our prayers today. You know, so often our perceptions, our geographical prejudices can make us believe that nothing good can come out of certain towns or counties or, for that matter, places around the world. But when we think of all of the people throughout history who have been called on to change the world, many of them have come from incredibly out-of-the-way places. Hence, we have, for example, Nathaniel's smug, demeaning, dismissive comment, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Let me give you some context. Even though our focus for this church year is Mark's gospel, occasionally throughout the year we're going to have a reading from John's gospel, and today is such a day. Last week, we heard about the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. And our reading today brings us to what happens next. In the verses before our reading today, we see John the Baptist pointing to Jesus and John encouraging his own disciples to start following Jesus. And they do. And one of them was Andrew. Yes, all right. Say it, hear it. Let's hear it for St. Andrew. And Jesus sees them following him, and he asks them, what are you looking for? And they respond, where are you staying? And Jesus replies, come and see. And they spend the day with Jesus. And then Andrew goes and finds his brother Simon and brings him to Jesus. And Jesus changes his name to Peter. And then Jesus moves on to Galilee. And there Jesus finds Philip. Now note that, please. Jesus finds Philip. And filled with joy over this newly formed relationship that, that he has with Jesus, Philip then finds Nathanael, makes this big speech about Jesus, and launches into Jesus' family tree, first from way back, Moses and, and the law and the prophets, and then from more recent history when, when he says, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Philip, you see, has the details, and he's laying out Jesus' street cred, if you will, to Nathaniel. And that's what leads to this rather snarky comment by Nathaniel. Nathaniel, can anything good come out of Nazareth? 
Now a word about Nazareth. It was Nowheresville, Palestine. <laughs> really. A town of about 200 to 400 inhabitants. It was one of those towns where if you blink, you'd miss it. No stoplight there. It's not mentioned in the Old Testament. No one ever made pilgrimages to Nazareth like they did going to Jerusalem. It was definitely not mentioned as the place where the Messiah would come from. A Bible dictionary describes it in this way. It is an insignificant agricultural village. So when Philip runs up to Nathaniel and says, we found the Messiah, and he's from the insignificant agricultural village of Nazareth, Nathaniel can only say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Maybe Nathaniel said that, not only because of Nazareth's seeming insignificance, but maybe Nazareth also had kind of a reputation. Jesus certainly in his ministry had a bit of challenge there. He was preaching one day in the synagogue, quoting from um, Isaiah and attributing those words to himself about he was coming to release the captives and, and free the prisoners and, and give sight to the blind. And, and the people in his hometown ended up getting kind of ticked off at what he said and they were gonna hurl him off of a cliff. So you can understand why maybe Nathaniel might have asked skeptically, can anything good really come out of Nazareth? And yet Nathaniel was about to discover that something amazingly good, something wonderfully life-giving did come out of Nazareth. Jesus, the Messiah. It was Nazareth where Jesus was raised. It was in Nazareth where he attended synagogue and learned the stories of the faith. It was in Nazareth that the scripture says Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. Throughout his life, Jesus would carry the name of his hometown community with him. The crowds of people said it. The angels at the empty tomb said it. They all called him Jesus of Nazareth. So Nathaniel, as he sits under that fig tree, is really not impressed by Philip's news. Nathaniel just couldn't get excited about a carpenter from the wrong side of the tracks. Now notice Philip's reaction to Nathaniel's dismissive remark. He doesn't retort something back, as we might be tempted to do. He doesn't get defensive, as we might do. He doesn't walk away hurt or angry. Instead, he simply says, come and see. Those words that Jesus had said in a few verses before. Such gracious, hospitable words. And apparently, Nathaniel takes Philip up on the invitation. Jesus sees Nathaniel. Now, Jesus knows what Nathanael has just said about Nazareth, and yet he does not, as we might have been tempted to do, he doesn't get in Nathanael's face and say, I heard you trash-talking about my hometown. Nor does he say, as Debbie Thomas notes in her commentary, here is a man who is a cynic, who is stunted by doubt. Here is a man who is governed by prejudice. Any of those things might have been true, but you see, Jesus looked past all of that. And instead of say, instead he said, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. You see, Jesus named the quality that he wanted to bless and to cultivate in this would-be follower. The quality that made Nathaniel a person of beauty, an image bearer of God. He saw the goodness deep within Nathaniel. And how does Nathaniel respond to that realization? 
that he is seen by God, that he matters to God, immediately he, com he says, Rabbi, you're the son of God. It was indeed an epiphany moment as he's transferred, transformed from skeptic into believer, from being critical into being a disciple. And Jesus said to him that stuff about the angels ascending and descending. Basically, he's saying, you ain't seen nothing yet, Nathaniel. And think of everything that Nathaniel saw on that journey with Jesus. He saw healings and miracles. And the greatest miracle of all, Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, rising from the dead. Now for all of the seekers in the room, and really aren't we all seekers at one time or another, Jesus asks us, what are you looking for? Are you looking for grace and forgiveness? Are you looking for life that's abundant and filled with joy? Are you looking for a deep and abiding connection with the God who created you just so he could love you? Before you even gave Jesus a thought, he was thinking of you. Isn't that what our psalm today says? Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. We worship the God who knows all about us and yet still loves us and leads us on an incredible journey of faith. And we, as God's chosen, as God's beloved, are called to invite others to come and see. But if we say those words, we have to put that abundant life in action, and we do that around here. We must welcome the stranger and feed the hungry, as some of our folks are going to do today down at In the Garden. We must embrace with the love of Christ all whom we encounter, whether they walk through our doors or pass by on the street. We have to be able to show them that here among us, the love of Jesus Christ is experienced and offered. It's a love that knows no distinctions, a love that embraces all people no, whether, no matter where they are from or who they love. We leave this day knowing that we are claimed by God and that our calling, yes, it's not just for clergy, our calling is to share that love with others. Please pray with me. God who calls, equips, and empowers, and sends us forth, we give thanks for those in our lives who in, have invited us to come and see and to experience your amazing grace. We ask for strength and direction for ourselves as individual believers, for our community of faith, St. Andrews, as we invite others into your life-changing grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>